guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I am here with our weekly video and tip on creating an indoor space that really supports your health and your wellness. We're going to talk about giving your home a checkup. So we're going to treat your home like a patient this week and find out exactly what is going on with things that you can't always see, specifically through environmental testing. And I know this can sound like a big and kind of burdensome ordeal to go through environmental testing, but truly it's not. It can be as simple as running one small radon test if you live in an area that has high levels of radon. It could be doing a mold test if you're concerned about your health and maybe you have some markers for possibly living in a moldy environment. It could be something like a water test for your drinking water, which I encourage everybody to get for their own home because we just don't know what is truly in our water when we're drinking it. So environmental testing is something that anybody can do. We're going to go through the big tests that you can do on your own and the ones that you can hire out to a professional. We're going to talk about why it's important because truly if you don't know what's going on with your home, you're not going to be able to fix it. So there are areas of your home that you probably have an excellent handle on and then there are areas of your home that are basically invisible and many of us don't have a clue on how to handle them. And while there's a few ways to handle this, such as an indoor air quality monitor or environmental testing, you really have to understand why and how to utilize these tools. So imagine your home is like a patient going in for a checkup. Sometimes a doctor is going to focus on a few very important tests, and sometimes they're going to do a series of tests in a certain order. It all depends on the patient, and in this case, your house, so each house is totally different, whether they share a layout with other homes or they're built by the same builder, really no two homes are exactly the same. And no two families living in a home are going to have the same needs, the same sensitivities or budget or time constraints. This is why there really just is no one size fits all approach that truly works for creating the healthiest home possible. Each step and the order of those steps really has to be chosen with intention. If you don't know the purpose behind each step you're taking, you'll have no idea what to do with the results of any tests or any findings. And while homeowners ignore environmental testing most of the time. It can be such an insightful eye into the true health and wellness of your home because many of these home health issues you can't visually see and there's no way to know they're affecting your space until you test or monitor for them. So when we talk about diagnosing a sick home, half the battle is actually understanding what is going on in your home in the first place. And because homes are so complex, oftentimes we don't even know we need to be testing or looking for a problem to begin with. And the truth is you cannot fix something you don't know about. Issues that become health concerns in a home won't always be made aware of until you or someone in your home has health problems that are actually being caused by your home. So when this happens, the healing is a long road because not only do you have to heal yourself, but you also have to heal your home and the environment you're living in. You aren't going to completely heal your body and then go right back into the same toxic environment that caused the problem in the first place. And chances are your body won't actually heal completely while you're in that toxin filled space. So it's why environmental testing is something to think about as a measure of prevention instead of waiting until someone becomes ill in your home. And while there are so many tests you can do in your home, the ones we're going to cover today are the big ones that really help you eliminate the really big problems. Many of these are offered by local professionals, but some tests are easy enough to mail out from professionals like myself, like for formaldehyde and water, which we're going to talk about. But the first is mold testing, which can be done a few different ways. 
The most common is with a swab test that collects dust from your HVAC filter. So mold spores are large enough to be caught by a filter. And so if there are mold spores floating around in your home, generally it will be collected by your furnace filter. And so a swab should detect the mold spores. Now, most mold tests will also tell you what kind of mold and how much of it was detected. So remember that some molds come from the outside, from trees, grass, and plants, and then some mold may come from damaged building materials. It's very important to know which ones you have. Generally, a mold test can be mailed to you. I have a special swab test for mycotoxins that you can get through my website, or you can have a professional come out to your home. If you're local in Minnesota, I also do mold testing with an air pump, which takes a sample from the air, and we also do a swab test. So it would be a two-fold test that you would get. The second test that should really be done in your home is radon. Radon is actually the number one cause of lung cancer in non-smokers, and it's something that many people just are not aware of. So depending on where you live in the country, you may have soil around your home that is high in producing radon. Radon is odorless, and so the only way to test for radon is with some sort of testing device. Now, you can purchase a DIY radon test, or you can hire someone to come out with like a continuous radon monitor to get an accurate reading of what levels are in your home. I would encourage you if anyone is living or spending a large amount of time in the lowest level of your home, it may be worth testing for radon as proximity and time spent around it are directly connected to lung cancer diagnoses. And while formaldehyde is likely in all of our homes, some homes can have very high amounts due to off-gassing or types of materials or products brought in. So we know that formaldehyde is a carcinogenic solution, and so it can increase the risk of cancer in some individuals. It also is something that we generally won't know is high in our homes without some sort of test. So You can test for formaldehyde with an at-home test that is mailed to you. I do this with a lot of my clients, and then I would go through the results with you. You can also hire a professional in your area if you'd like someone to come and do the testing in your home. Either of these options will give you the level of formaldehyde in the area that you test, which can be an amazing tool to understand where the levels need to be reduced inside your home. And then finally, A true water test is going to be looking at more than just like the pH and hardness of your water. A home water test should be looking at things like chlorine levels, lead, nitrates, mercury, and all kinds of other toxins that could be at higher levels in your home. So every home is going to be completely different based on where your water source is and then what type of plumbing is in your home. Plumbing can actually leach toxins into your water in addition to the toxins that may already be coming into your home from the source. A simple water test that tests for hundreds of contaminants is the best way to go. All you do is simply fill up a test tube and mail it back and I have a link in the blog post for you that will get you started with one of those. And then there's hiring a professional. So one of the reasons I love the idea of hiring a professional tester is because they can help you go through the test results when you get them. There is absolutely nothing worse than a detailed report with all kinds of information about your indoor air and then having no idea what to do with that information. Chances are it'll feel really overwhelming and you're gonna start looking at a laundry list of contaminants found in your home or high levels of a toxin, and you're just not going to know where to go next. So that being said, I do advocate for homeowners doing their own testing first if there aren't any signs that there is a problem with a particular toxin in your home. Usually testing on your own or with a mail-in test is much less expensive and can actually be done on your own quite quickly. It's a good way to tell if you need to do more extensive testing with a professional if you get a result that isn't favorable. Another time that I say just go ahead to a professional is if you've had another contractor or health professional 
recommend it based on what they see in your space or with your own health and wellness. This is a time to skip the indoor air quality monitor altogether and just head to a professional test. Another option is an indoor air quality monitor. So you can really benefit your space by having an indoor air quality monitor that will help you understand your home's air toxins and the timing of these things. So one of the most interesting things in a home is that not all problems are at their worst all the time. Usually it ebbs and flows and there's usually a time of day that you may see large spikes in toxins due to the activity within your home or the airflow within your home. So my favorite is this one. It is the Air Things Indoor Air Quality Monitor, and it's been around long enough that it's been tested for accuracy, and yet they keep up with new technology and research to know what things change from time to time. So this device is actually used by professionals like myself and homeowners alike, and so it really speaks volumes as to the product. So the Indoor Air Quality Monitor is going to look at your air pressure. Air pressure can affect radon levels and can also make you feel crummy. So it's important to know what your levels are in order to determine what habits you need to change in order to fix that inside your home. It will also look at the temperature. We know that warm air encourages VOCs to off-gas. Cooler air is better for limiting off-gassing, it's better for sleep, it's better for all kinds of things in your home, and it's good to keep an eye on that in each individual room. The humidity is obviously directly connected to mold, VOCs, off-gassing, dust mite production, and skin irritation. So you have to have the perfect level inside your home, ideally around 35%, to make it a healthier space. This device actually tests for radon as well and monitors it, which I think is so great because radon actually fluctuates throughout the day and then throughout the year as well. And with a continuous radon monitor that is built in, this is the type of device I use as a professional, you can actually shift your habits to allow fresh air into your home at the right time to dilute that radon gas. This monitor checks for VOCs, and this is one of my favorite things because VOCs in our home, they're a huge toxin that we come in contact with all the time. VOCs are toxic to our bodies in many ways, and the truth is we're exposed to them constantly. So having a good idea of the levels in your home can help you make important decisions about changes in your space. And then finally, it looks at CO2. This is measured in public buildings and in schools because it directly correlates to how good the indoor air quality is inside. So the higher the CO2 level, the worse the indoor air quality is. Essentially, it's a barometer for how much fresh air is coming inside. And then finally, the monitor is also going to look at particulate matter. So the dust and other particles in your air actually contain toxins from inside your home and then toxins that are brought into your home. The higher amounts of particulate matter likely the worse the indoor air quality is. So higher particulate matter counts from an indoor air quality monitor can also mean that there are a lot of allergens in the air, which can be irritating to many individuals. The good news is that once you know what is going on in your indoor air, you can begin to fix the problem and ultimately heal your home. Oftentimes the remedy for these problems we discussed is an easier solution than we conjure up in our heads. The best and least expensive way to improve your indoor air quality is to increase ventilation throughout your home. Ventilation can mean opening a window or it can mean improving mechanical ventilation through vented fans in your home. So whichever way you choose to ventilate your home, just know that it is improving the indoor air quality with very little effort from you. It makes a huge impact with very little work on your part. 
an air purifier will actually fix a lot of problems detected by an indoor air quality monitor. While it won't reduce radon, it can remove mold spores, dust, allergens, and even some VOCs that adhere to the dust in your home. An air purifier is an excellent way to improve your indoor air quality after you've got a dusting routine down and after you've increased ventilation around your space. I personally use the Medify Air, which I have linked in this week's blog post. It is my top pick because it reduces all of these toxins and it is at a very favorable price point. Plus, I have a $15 off coupon if you'd like to use it with the code HHOTB15. And I'm so excited for my new course that is created and ready. This online workshop style course is going to help you build the foundation you need to start creating a healthier home and then walking you through how to make a customized plan for your space that will take you through big and small changes. So basically, you'll create an entire blueprint for the health of your home and plan out the steps you'll take. So I have an entire section within the course on just how to fix particular problems that are detected by indoor air quality monitors and the exact steps to take to fix your indoor climate. Another option is remediation or mitigation. So if testing shows mold or radon, it's really important to know that the only way to truly fix these issues without just putting on a Band-Aid is actually to remove the issue. So with mold, it's going to be complete remediation in order to stop the problem from spreading further into your space. Sometimes remediation can be done on a very small scale, and sometimes it's a huge project. It just really depends on how much mold is present within your home. And with a toxin like radon, you will mitigate the gas or essentially remove it from your home and safely expel it outside with a radon mitigation system. This, again, is the only way to truly get radon out of your home. And then finally, there's water filters. So the beauty of having a water test done is you will know the specific type of water filter you should be purchasing for your home. Not all water filters remove the same contaminants, and so you can't use the one-size-fits-all approach for this. It's really important to choose the right system for the type of issues that you're having. And I'm linking you to a post within the blog post that will help you figure out what type of filter you're going to need for the type of issue you're having. So whether you decide to have environmental testing done or whether you choose to go the route of an indoor air quality monitor, just remember that knowledge really is power when it comes to your home. Again, you can't really fix what's going on without knowing which problems are there. I'm so thankful you were able to join me for this video and I hope that you were able to take something away from this that you can apply to your own home, whether it's getting an indoor air quality monitor or whether it's doing some environmental testing on your own. Just know that I'm always here if you need any help or you have questions about getting the ball rolling. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel because I will be here next week with another healthy house tip on creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and your wellness.